Let's get to Mike. He's been extraordinarily patient. I'm sorry, Mike, you asked your question about 30 minutes ago, and you've heard some other conversations sort of related, but not directly related. So for Mike, can you talk about a collar position where a long put is added to an at the money covered call? Okay. Well, absolutely I can, Mike, and I thank you for your question. This is a question we deal with on a regular, uh, semi-regular basis. We've had some webinars I'll try to find for you for further reference, but I'm going to cover this, of course, as well, Mike. You hear me talk a lot about the married put positions and the radioactive trade uh, that forces us to ideal size position, allows us to control risk to single digits, but I'm buying the stock for more determined growth and I'm buying a put that's six to eight months out in time. Does this really relate to your question, Mike? It does in a sense. Because although I advocate the married put approach, controlling risk to single digits and what's talked about in the blueprint uh, for the full structure and the 12 different ways to manage it, if you already have an existing covered call, adding the far out in time in the money put is not a good idea. You would do the married put first, then look to sell a call later. But to create a collar, that you're talking about, which is a covered call with an out of the money put for lower cost to just control it over the expiration time frame. you simply want to evaluate what the position, how it would affect, excuse me, your existing covered call. And as we talked about with rolling the covered call for Yogesh, does the new output, the new potential return you'd see with adding the protection take you out of the goals for your trading plan. Let's take a look. Um, I'm going to use DAR. It's a position I'm in as a married put. It's up uh, 56.33 today. When as high as about 57. Um, sorry, I went to the wrong place there. I just want to check the price. We're going to use DAR. And this has monthlies, but that's okay. No, no, no. I'm going to I'm sorry. I'm going to stick with craft. I apologize for that, Mike. I am going to stick with Kraft because there's more expirations. We're going to go to January 8th. No, we'll go to January 15th. My apologies. The stock right now, of course, is trading at uh, that 35-ish range. And so this doesn't give us single strikes. But let's say that we bought shares of stock today and we sold the call. The at the money 35 call, Mike. And so 34.77 at the money 35 call here. Good potential of 3.3%, maximum monetary profit of about 111. But I'm concerned about the downturn. Mike, I'm concerned that the pullback might happen because the stock has had a good run, but I still want to potentially get assigned here at this price if it works out the way that I want. But what if it doesn't? Okay. So I took in 88 cents a premium. I want a controlled, guaranteed stop to the downside in case my expectations of a potential pullback are well more than I expected. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go to the chain. We're going to keep the same expiration. We're going to treat this as a standard collar, sort of a fire and forget position, meaning that if it's above 35, I take the return, my expected profit, and I just move on. If it falls below the put, well, I get out at the put strike price. I take a 5 6 7% risk and move on. Or it stays between both the call and the put might expire worthless, then maybe I consider rebracketing the collar. The first thing I want to do though is make sure that whatever put I'm buying is a third to at least a half less than the initial call premium I received. I don't want to take too much away. Okay. Um, this is the risk I have with customers. Uh, I'm sorry, I've had discussions with customers recently who had, let's say, a standard covered call such as this that was right at the money. And the stock fell a couple points. And they say, oh, should I buy the put now that the stock's fallen? Well, the problem is once the stock falls, these puts are going to be a higher price to where you may create a collar position that has no chance of a profit because the put's too expensive. Okay. but. We're talking about having an at the money covered call here. That's where it shows slightly out of the money, but best at the money we have for craft right now. Still pretty good. Pretty good return. We saw that 3%, pretty decent. And now let's talk about which one. Well, the 30 
obviously is a lower price. I'm going to keep most of my premium. But I paid $34.77 for the stock. The 30 put is about 14% out of the money. What does that mean, Mike? That means if the stock fell to 30 before the insurance policy kicked in, I'm going to be looking at a 14 or 15% loss. Is that a comfort level for the risk you want to take on the collar position? All right. Okay, I'm sorry, it's 12. In this case, what did you do? You didn't reduce your cost that much, did you? You could still potentially make 2.9%, about $98 instead of 111 if the stock's trading above the short call strike price that you expected. That part of this equation looks phenomenal. I added protection. I added insurance to the position, and I didn't take too much away from my potential percent return. I'm still in my wheelhouse for my targeted trading plan of what I want to make in 28 days. Let's say my target was 2%. Well, I was above it with 3% with just the covered call. I'm still above it here. I was 3.3, I think, but I'm still above it here at 2.9%. That's great. But is this a good controlled risk for you? Does this match? the risk threshold that you want to limit the trade to? That's a personal question. I can't answer that for you. But consider it this way. I'm going to jot these numbers down, and we're going to go back also to look at this for that discussion we had a moment ago. Um, but let's say on average, let's say your target is 2.5% return to be assigned on these at-the-money covered call positions. It might be a little higher where volatility is now, but let's just stay with 2.5% as a minimum. Now, you're risking 12% by adding the put. Okay, well, that's great. So if the stock falls 6%, you're not looking, I mean, the stock alone, not your position, but the stock falls 6%, you're still only at a 4% loss. That's great. Um, then it falls 10%, okay? And then it falls 12%, well, you've capped it to 11.8. But a 12% loss, if your average is a 2.5% gain, that's an average of about five trades, isn't it? One loss wipes out five trades. How does that set you back because of the skew? Is there a better play? Well, let's take a look. We know it's going to cost more. We know it's going to take more away from the expected upside premium. If I buy the 32 and a half now, if that's going to be 30 cents right at midpoint, we're taking a little bit more than a third off of the cost basis. I'm sorry, off of the premium we received. Not a bad play. Pretty close. I'm still pretty close to the two, two and a half percent target I want to make on this position, Mike. And I'm only taking a risk of 5%. Why is that relevant? Because long term, this is going to give you a better success rate here than taking the 12% loss and looking for the 2.5% gain or even 3% gain. We're going to run those numbers. So you've committed to an at-the-money covered call, Mike. Although I prefer to use and do use the radioactive trading techniques in my portfolio, when you already have committed to the covered call and you have the covered call in place, when you're adding a put, you want to add an out-of-the-money put with the same expiration and try to keep the cost of the new put to less than half of what you originally collected on the call premium. Uh, I think we had this discussion recently for uh, Betty and for a couple others as well. There's some uh, webinars there on YouTube and I believe on Power Options uh, that discuss converting a covered call. I'll find one or two of them for you in just a moment. If I was opening craft today, I wouldn't be opening the at the money put or the out of the money put. For me as a radioactive trade, a, a properly structured married put position, Mike, I'm going to probably buy the June. Oh, it's July. I'm sorry. The July, what 210 day output, and I'm going to go slightly in the money, probably to the 3750. That's going to give me the proper married put structure that I'd want for this position for longer term growth, not just short term premium. Why would I never do the radioactive trading structure once I've already committed to an at the money covered call? Because now I'm creating a bearish position where I can lose more to the upside, okay? So here, 
this does not look like any type of profit and loss, right? And this is showing us at January expiration, at the short call expiration. This is not the proper structure to use once you've already committed to an at the money covered call trade. You wouldn't buy that deep in the money put against this call. If you've already committed to a near term covered call, you're buying an out of the money put where you want to look for a premium that's less than half of what you sold with the same expiration shorter term. This is going to hurt. <laughs> this is not the structure that I would use. This is nowhere near a desired return. And your risk goes up to 9.8%, not to your downside, to your upside in the direction you thought the stock was going to go. Because now if the stock continues to move up, you've capped your gain at 35 for the obligation of the call, and you're consistently losing money on the put as it continues to move up. You no longer have positive delta because you've capped the top of the stock. But opening this initially here, buying the stock at 34.77, buying the July 37 and a half put for 490, that's the controlled risk I want. Unlimited upside, 5.5% worst case scenario maximum risk for 210 days of insurance. That is the proper Mary put structure. Okay. Uh, Sam says radioactive and collar trades are the best structure. Yeah. If you're set up correctly, that's the best. I'm just pointing out that you don't want to use the married puts we talk about to add to an already existing covered call position. I know you know that, Sam, because you've committed to the covered call. So you're managing the covered call, not trying to create a new trade because you'll put yourself in a worse position. Or buy to close the call and restructure it as a married put this way, the radioactive way. If you expected longer term growth on the position, wanted to leave your upside open. All right. That being said, I'm going to head over to radioactivetrading.com right now. And I'm going to go into the resources tab. And we've got this awesome tool here, the trade simulator tool, which allows you to run what if scenarios. Essentially, what this tool does is it allows me to put in my expected target win rate on average. What are the average on my winners? What are the average losses I allow? What is my success rate? And I can play with allocation too. Flip a coin 100 times and what do my profits expect to make? Okay. First, we're going to talk, we're going to cover this with Mike. So I showed that one caller, we could potentially make a return. We said 2.5 on average. This one was 2.9. Maybe on average, we're making 2.5%. And we're taking a risk of 12% with an at the money covered call. Let's assume, Mike, that your trading selection is decent, meaning that you're right more than 50% of the time. Your probability of loss is only 40% of the time. You're right 60% of the time. 60% of the time, you usually make that 2.5, 2.9% uh, return. And only 40% of the time do you get somewhere near that average loss of 12. It'd probably even be higher. This. Let's go 65 for you. Okay, we'll go 35%. So 65% success record with at the money collars where you're looking to make 2.5% return and taking a 12% risk. Start off, I'm sorry, start off with $10,000. Allocate half of that to um, each trade and flip the coin 100 times. We didn't hit our targets. We were only at 58% of the time. What happened? You took $10,000 and lost about 80% of it. That's not a good structure for a collar or for a trading plan. All right, 72% of the time, you're right. And I know you're not going to be losing 12% every time, but just think of how the numbers work. You start off with a loss right away and never make it back. 60% down. Okay. Uh, let me get a good one. Let me get 75 or 78 if I can. See, you're, you're, we're not getting it. That's why I said I didn't like that structure with that risk. Let's, let's increase it. Let's go to 3%. The 2.9 might keep our probability of loss at 35 Let's see if we can get a good at 68% win ratio. You're still not making it. Okay. You're, you're down. Your $10,000 is down about 62%. Okay. At 77% win ratio, you're still down after 100 trades. What is the other one I showed you? 2.5% maximum, no, 2%, wasn't it? 2% maximum return by using the 32 and a half strike put. And our risk was only 4.9%. I think that was right. And let's keep the same record. Okay, at least now, at one point, we were up 10% on the position. And after 100 trades, we could still have some success, but probably not near your targets. You need to be right more often in this case. 
not a great structure. My average when I do standard collars, what I look for, Mike, when I do standard collars is a minimum 2.5% return, similar without taking a loss more than 5% with the structure. If I'm right 65% of the time, 68% of the time, I can still see some gains similar to what you saw. If I exceed that, which I need to, right, I need to exceed that win-loss ratio with this structure, this is almost close. I mean, at one point I was up 24%. That's really close. But again, here, we're in a position where we're only making, after 100 trades, 11% or so of what we expect, 11% against the return. Is that meeting your goals? That's sort of the thing with the collar spreads. When investors ask me, you know, if I'm looking for a good month by month return instead of what you're doing with the far out married puts, and I'm looking to make two and a half percent return when I'm assigned and I'm controlling my loss to five percent or four and a half percent, I'm going to be successful, right? The answer is yes, but you're probably not going to expect to see with the month by month or week by week collars you're looking for unless you're at a 67, 70, 75 percent success rate. Let's go back to Kevin. I had mentioned to Kevin earlier that I didn't want to see on a bull put credit spread losses more than 15, 50%. Let's take bull put credit spreads where I'm right 15. I, uh, my target is a 15% profit for two week out spreads, 15% return. I'm going to troll my losses to 50%. Now, I'm going to be right about 83% of the time. That's what we typically see. It's an 83. Some years it's 90. I mentioned that earlier. 2016, 2017 was a 90% success rate. Dropped down at one point to 83 um, and an 81% success rate in 2018 if I traded all the way through. In any case, we're going to change the allocation too. Okay. So we start out with $10,000. I'm going to only put maybe a fourth or probably only 20%, um, one fifth of that into each trade. Okay. This isn't proper position structure, Sam. I know that, but Let's start off. Let's just see what we do here. I'm sorry. I do reverse that in my head. You put in the opposite. The probability of loss is 17% for an 83% success rate. Okay, not 90. 78, not good. 84, that's perfect. Okay, so with this success rate here, I'm right 84% of the time on my out of the money bull put credit spreads. Average return is 15%. I keep the losses, those 16, 17% of the time to 50%. I am achieving my goals after 100 trades, definitely with the leverage spread position. Okay. I keep the same return. I keep the same success rate. I allow the losses to go to 65. 82 win ratio. I'm at a loss of 8%. I didn't double my money. I'm at a loss. Let's get to 84 again. 86. Okay. Pretty close. That's good. Now, instead of doubling the money, taking 10,000 up to 22,000, we're only up 29%. That's just going from 50 to 65. What if you allow the losses to go up to 75% and have an 84 or 85% success rate? There's 86, 30% return. That's good, but probably not your target for leverage spread trade. 81%, you've lost 50% of your value because you allowed the losses to go too big. 85, just about at break even. And at one point you had a 50, okay, 45% drawdown on the portfolio. So this tool is very helpful, Mike, not only just what we illustrated for Kevin about why I wanna stop those losses on the spread trades to 50% and not allow them to go higher. He might allow it to, okay, I should have done that for Kevin. Let's say his average was 30. He showed us a 37.7% return on that Tesla position. And uh, let's say that we take this up to 65 and assume the same 85% success rate. He's looking pretty good. Okay. That's good. That's yes. Yeah, so that's very powerful. So he hasn't started off with any losers. Let me see if I can, there we go. There's a loss in the middle, but it's still very powerful uh, in that case with a 30% return. But if the losses go up to 75%, okay, still profitable, but nowhere near what you expected. Okay, so this comes down to what are your target returns in that case and what can you allow? And that's why with my structure, I don't let the spreads go to a 50% loss. That's why with the collars, what we were looking at, I don't let the losses go beyond that 10% range. I'm still going to keep it around 5%. 
let's say 60 uh, in that case. Ow, sorry, 40. So the 60 win-loss ratio is so you're looking for a target return of three on the collar and taking a max loss of five, which you won't take every time you lose and you won't make 3% every time you win, but it's giving you a gauge. Is that going to work for you? And I don't think it will. we got to be in that 35, 30, I'm going to put 37 actually, I'm sorry, 33 actually, 67% target. So there we go, 11% over time. 20% at one point with 72 trades. That makes sense for a conservative approach. 71, of course. I'm trying to get right on 67 because that's about where you need to be a break. With this matchup of three to five, you need about a 67% win ratio to hit the break even. There it is. 66, 67% to hit the break even, Mike. And yeah, it's not saying it's meeting your goals, but with that kind of structure, that's what you want. But you saw that with the 2.9 or even 3% return, using that cheaper put, if you allowed more of those losses to go to 12%, you wouldn't be achieving your goals. Now, what if I allow gains of 6.6% and I only lose 4.5%? I should, I'm sorry, let's go 7%. I only lose 4.5% and I'm just right half the time. And we'll go back to that covered call collar approach of 50-50. There's a disastrous trade record. I'm only right 38% of the time, but I only saw a drawdown of 10%. There's one at 44. You see that? I'm at a profit. After 100 trades, controlling my loss to 4.5% and averaging a 7% win rate, I'm wrong more than I'm right. I only have a 44% win ratio, and after 100 trades, I can still end up with a positive record. I'm right more often than I'm wrong. Just 51% of the time with this structure, and I've almost doubled my money. Let's put this at 40. Try to get right to 60-40. I'll explain why in a second. Okay, there you go. Make 7% when I'm right, lose only 4.5% when I'm wrong, right 60% of the time, Take $10,000, allocate half of it into um, a position each time. So 5000 in each position, right only 60% of the time. Luckily, strings of winners in a row, so we don't see any drawdown. At one point, we almost tripled the value after 100 trades. Why am I showing these numbers to you? Because this is essentially what I have achieved and I've been doing since 2008 with the proper married put structure from the beginning with a stock plus put combination, 59.41. Oh, I'm sorry, it's 6.6%. I was right, uh, but I've got two positions with a 10% gain. I haven't closed out yet today. Um, and 73 total positions. I'm not at 100 yet. But as you can see, if I keep the average gains on the winners right and keep controlling my risks with that proper structure, leaving the upside open and doing the income methods afterwards, I could actually, you saw it, I could be wrong more often than right and still see a profit. I can't do that with covered calls. I can't do that with spread trades, absolutely. And I probably couldn't do that with the collar structure at all. That's the balance. That's the power of sort of the married put position and uh, the radioactive trading techniques that's described in the blueprint. And just because it's my job, I want to remind everyone, of course, the end of year promotion for the blueprint, uh, where you can pick up the blueprint and lock in the special eight end of year bonuses that ends on December 31st, but you've got still 13 days to get the blueprint to see the proper way to trade the married put structure, the 12 different income methods we use on that position. And this special offer will end on December 31st. You want to lock in these extra bonus values before the end of the year. Uh, go to radioactivetrading.com, click on, click on the products tab and click on the blueprint there. And you'll see that. And sorry, let's scale back here. That's what this does for you. Okay, so let me put my numbers down. I'm sorry, it's 4.9 and 6.6. .6, but still, you can sort of see the numbers there on the simulation compared to the collar, compared to the spread trades. Let me go back to 50. Even though you saw my 59% uh, win ratio, I want to go 50-50. There it is, 46%. Even with the average returns I'm making on those positions, controlling the loss to 4.9% on the losers, I can be wrong more often than right and still 
over 100 trades, expect to be at about a 16% profit from where I started. That's very difficult to do with any other strategy approach, covered calls. You have to be right more often than you're wrong, about 66, 67% of the time. Even the standard collar structure, you've got to be right about 65% of the time to make that work. And with the spread trades, even with Kevin's high return that he showed on his Tesla position, with that 37% return, 35% return, um, you still have to control the risks to 60%, 65%. You can't let it go beyond that because it starts taking off from the gains. But you've got to be right <laughs> 83, 84% of the time to continue that profit. Okay? This structure here should represent a portion of your portfolio, especially the core holdings in your account. So only one I know where you can be wrong more often than right and still make money. But that's uh, enough of that. I just wanted to share that with you all. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Hmm. Oh, wait. Search on this channel. Um, what was it again? It was. Um, I'm going to try to look for collars. Uh, no. These are all really old. Uh, protecting. Let me try protecting, Kevin. Months ago. Protecting stock gains of the Mary Put. No. Strategies for earnings, protecting earnings. Collar or married put that's close. Hedging a long call. Mm. There it is. I'm sorry. That's what it's called. I apologize. Best protective put on a covered call and why not deeper in the money? This is um, 15 minutes long, uh, <laughs> but I think it'll give you some more details, Kevin, of what we were talking about in that situation. Okay. Um, that's that's the one I wanted to point you to. My apologies there. Best protective put on a covered call it's from six months ago. Uh, Deborah was the one. Debbie asked the question. I'm doing weekly covered calls, hoping to be assigned. What is the best time frame and strike for a protective put? Uh, so that's where we review, and then we cover some other topics there. So that relates to yours, Kevin. You can check that out on YouTube at any time. At the end of the year bonus offer, you just saw it. You can lock in these eight bonuses if you pick up the blueprint, the full course on the proper structure for using that married put approach, which we just saw, greatly puts the odds of market success in your favor, starting with the proper structure then the proper way to use the 12 income methods. But that special offer ends on December 31st at midnight. So if you wanna start protecting your positions properly and get that proper structure of limited risk remaining upside, head on over to radioactivetrading.com slash EOY or go to radioactivetrading.com and click that products tab and uh, check out the blueprint. You can read the full uh, table of contents there as well, uh, right on that page.